Alright YouTube, I'm gonna make like a quick little video about Galagos Ruins and just drop some tips. It's not gonna be like super long or super informative. Uh, Galagos Ruins is the roguelite of Chronicles, right? And uh, I don't know, I think it's a nifty little extra activity. I kind of enjoy it a bit. But uh, I feel like, you know, sorry, just throw a couple things in there. Um, so let's start. Tip number one, let's talk about the shop. Right, so we'll go into the shop. Uh, you have a five-star Devamon that you can purchase, and uh, at the top here, something you might not have actually noticed is the light and dark legendary scroll pieces. You may have confused them as being regular legendary scroll pieces if you just kind of spotted them and glanced over them and didn't really notice. And of course, there's also a few of these scrolls and some other things you might want to buy. Uh, for me personally, I like the Devamon and all these scroll pieces. Now, my understanding is that at some point in the future, when we uh, summon these LD scroll pieces, it's going to kind of translate over well to, uh, let's see, so if we go to the summon altar, if you remember that legendary scrolls, uh, the more legendary scrolls you summon, then you work towards a transcendent scroll. And my understanding is that at some point in the future, we're going to get a light and dark transcendence mileage as well, and that these shards will count towards it. So you, if you are buying them already, you may want to save them uh, for the future. And if you're not buying them yet, you may want to start buying them. So that's tip number one that I kind of wanted to throw out there. Uh, tip number two while we're here, it seems like the bosses don't uh, change at this Oh, maybe. I actually can't remember. I think this was I think this was right. Oh yeah, but they, they and they show up at the same time. So. Hmm. I don't know. So far, like my floor one was the same. I actually can't remember floor two. I have to wait till floor three to see. But so far, my run's been pretty similar. Uh, I know it does randomize a bit as well, though. So be careful of that. Not too sure on the bosses. <laughs> but uh, that's not what the important part is that I'm trying to talk about there. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was. When you're selecting your stages, you may find that it's more beneficial to clear uh, the stages that just give you raw coins, instead of going for, say, a trap sector where you don't know what the reward is going to be. Or um, the stone statue rooms, for example, they'll give you like a buff, right? The reward, not so much, but these kind of things here will give you an extra buff for your uh, for your research status here. Alright, you'll get like a selection of buffs that you can use. Um, personally, I feel like you should probably just focus on the coins because you'll get these guaranteed rewards that you Like obviously we need the refined stones so that you can go to the blacksmith in town, grab some refined stones. And uh, ancient Galagos coins is what we got to purchase the need in the shop, right? So just my recommendation would be try and go for the more guaranteed kind of rewards because you never know what you're going to get out of. Uh, these particular ones. <clears throat> Generally, what I find is that these, <coughs> excuse me, these stone statue rooms kind of just give me the the buff, and they don't actually give a uh, any kind of monetary reward or anything like that. And if you want to, uh, I feel like it's better just to go for the boss stages, or the elite stages, rather than the ones, because so far, uh, um, the stages themselves seem easy enough to solo for the most part. Uh, which would be like another tip, I recommend testing all of these rooms, the ones that you want to go into first. So we go start exploration, just go in solo with your summoner, try it out, it's neat, right? Uh, oops, I didn't mean to exit all the way out there. And uh, yeah, you know, get, get your resources first and foremost in my opinion, and uh, make do with what you need because re-rolling stats on gear with the refined stone, really handy. And of course, getting the Galagos coins also really handy. Now, uh, let's talk about Wrap Room, I guess. Let's see now. We're going to jump on in here. Uh, units you may want to bring, what I was going to mention. You may want to bring Nard or some other speed up kind of unit in order to get through the Trap Rooms. Now, you can, of course, do them without. Uh, I'm just going to bring in... A speed booster just to kind of give you guys a bit of an example here and we're gonna zoom 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 as best we can all right Eat. hey look at that oh, oh stuck stuck 
<laughs> Alright, you gonna you coming through, Bernard? Come on now, buddy. Alright, we we'll give ourselves a little bit of a buff. And away we go. Whoops, a daisy. I thought I was uh, far enough to the left there, but apparently not. We wanna get in front of here as quick as we can. And see how easily that helped? Now, uh, as a cleave, I can, of course, heal myself if I need to using uh, skill 3. Kina can, of course, heal herself too. So, something to take note of there. Ooh, I actually thought I was gonna make it past that one. This might be a little bit of that, uh, might be a little bit of lag or latency going on. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Anyways, these are a bit of an example there. They do kind of strip you, I think. But uh, if you don't get hit as much as I do, I feel, I, f I definitely felt in the last room that, uh, chamber that I did that there was a little bit of latency today. So there's a chance that I am suffering a bit from that, which is why I may be rolling onto one of the other servers. <laughs> um, let's see. Applies level two spell shield to the team target. The highest attack every 20 seconds. I mean that. Oh, it's like, do I want the crit damage? I'm just gonna take this. See how it goes for this particular run. But you know, just a little example, you may want to buff up with some uh, movement speed. Uh, Kina can obviously heal herself, and uh, Orbia may want a, to bring a healer for a lot of stages unless she gets a particular uh, buff. There are some buffs that give you some heals, um, so you know, heal on kill and stuff, so Orbia would be great for that if you can get it. I didn't find it last run until like stage 3, I think, sometime during stage 3. So just something to take note of. Um, also be aware that, so if we go to, I think it was Magic Order, so here, right? So for this particular couple of weeks, uh, some of this damage is dealt with water increased by 100%, right? <coughs> Doesn't mean you have to use the water weapon in every stage. So be aware that, like, um, you may find it a lot more convenient to run through with Keena's light weapon, for example, because of, uh, you know, it's a, like, big heal kind of weapon. Or in my case, as a cleave, I go through with wind weapon using the shield, fire weapon to skill three heal, and then the water weapon I can do some more damage with. I've got the water buff with, right? Uh, obviously, it also debuffs the enemy, but for the most part, like cleave's uh, better weapons are the wind and fire for this particular roguelite. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What else was there? Oh yeah. Uh, so particular types of units you may want to bring. Uh, let's see, if I go to Selected, now I'm thinking, for the most part, I feel like uh, Resurrect is quite handy, because, uh, in, in Invincibility. So, Resurrect, uh, for if you're using some units on bosses, and you may need to run back, resurrect them and stuff. Last couple, uh, the last Galagos Ruins I did, um, there was kind of a bug where I'd picked up a buff that kind of, if you go to die... Uh, it makes you invincible, and it like resurrects you and makes you invincible, and it was overriding my Cleef and Dua, right? Um, so what ha what would happen is that it would then count as me being dead, and then the bosses were resetting. So this was like floor three bosses when I was at there, because I didn't die until them, right? So I found this out the hard way on the bosses, and they would then go and reset, and the HP would reset. So I was actually kind of killing one boss. Get have it would reset and then I'd kill another boss and the other boss like one of the other bosses would be out and it was just a nightmare uh, to not have that endure to keep trying and then run away but you know the fight wouldn't have ended then either they wouldn't have reset so I don't know <laughs> now um also uh, so units like Chloe you may uh, enjoy because of invincibility to help with bursting bosses down uh, especially as an Orbia player because you'll get that mana back real quick with bursting uh, elemental disadvantage units or units that are elemental disadvantage to you. So my recommendation for units is obviously uh, like things like immunity, healing, support, endure, um, resurrection, Not I don't know why I said endure, I meant invincibility and uh, resurrection. And then of course you may want to bring some of your core DPS units as well. I actually realized that I forgot Fire Valkyrie in my own list this particular time around but you know, <laughs> I just brought whatever because uh, for the most part, oh no, wait, she's up here. Never mind. Uh, for the most part, I rely on my summoner, and if my summoner can't kill through it at the moment, then uh, my units just kind of get insta-gived anyway. Uh, so things that help keep them alive, 
like invincibility are my go-to and then resurrect for in the case of the bosses resetting in case i pick up a particular summoner buff have been quite handy right and uh yeah i mean you know <laughs> Uh, these merchants so far, uh, they've been a bit whatever. I haven't found anything I wanted to buy yet. And uh, again, these stone statue rooms are a bit, you know, you're going to get a buff anyway, right? But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It wasn't really, it wasn't really too much to go over with this. Like, we're not trying to, you know, I just wanted to kind of throw this out there and say, hey, here's some tips on what you may want to bring or may not want to bring and what to be careful of here oh um this was the thing i was forgetting uh my understanding is that knight buffs work for cleave now i'm not sure what might work for orbia and uh Hina. i would like to think that mage may work for orbia but my understanding is that the last time uh, the actual buff that was messing with me last time was actually a knight buff and uh, which was resetting the bosses and counting towards sleep. So I don't know if this is a particular bug or if it counts on purpose uh, to do with the, cause it, you know, it particularly says knight and obviously Cleef is a knight, but uh, I wasn't expecting it to work on summoner as well. So we'll have to, I'm gonna keep an eye on and see if this particular one works for him too, but just something to take note of as well. Um, these particular class based buffs may also work on your summoner not sure which one would i guess support right would work for kina uh depending and yeah you know support for kina mage for orbia probably and seems knight for cleef not sure about a warrior like i'm not gonna pick a warrior buff just in case but you know it is what it is <laughs> anyways just want to do like a quick one on that and uh i already went longer than i expected to but uh yeah um my recommendation for this stuff uh, pick things like attack power, defense power, resistance, crit rate, crit damage for your summoner, and then use your monsters as support, and then supporting damage when you can. Um, obviously, as an Orbia, you may want to just run through everything as a raw healer, and uh, Kina can heal herself, so she should be able to solo most of the stages on her, especially if you've built her uh, mostly for damage, right? Which I know a lot of people have, especially with the higher tier gear. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna leave it there and uh, yeah, good luck on your pulls if you do do that uh, Good luck on your trap stages because they can be a little annoying at times I tend to avoid them because the rewards are a bit whatever and Usually I'll just go for the damage, you know, the attack stages force my way through and uh, yeah Good luck guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace